Good morning. Good morning. I welcome you in the name of the Lord, and uh, we thank God for bringing us to this day. And uh, we are really grateful to God for bringing us here, and then uh, for everything that God is doing in our life. So I welcome uh, Reverend Peter to lead us in this house. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to welcome you into church today. And to those who are watching at home a little later on, uh, we welcome you as well. And we look forward to the time when, God willing, we can welcome you back into church as well. Everything changes and we're in a new phase of our worshipping life together. And perhaps it's that slight lifting that has brought you here today, and we're very pleased to welcome you all back. As we come to the Lord today, we're going to offer time now to Joe and the worship band to lead us in praise with our masks on, of course. It's been quite a while, hasn't it? <laughs> Finally, I don't have to say, you can't sing with your voices, because today we're going to be able to do that. And um, I had a quick look, and it's been 497 days since we've um, sung together corporately as the um, body of Christ here. And that's 11,000 hours or more. So um, I'm sure we're going to have plenty to um, praise God for, plenty to thank him for. And so we hear from the Psalms, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. So come, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And so I invite you to stand if you're able. Let us exalt the name of the Lord together in song. Hallelujah.
Father, we thank you that we can be here today and bless your holy name with our voices, that we can sing together in praise, in unison. We praise you because you are good. We praise you because you are faithful. We praise you because you love us and we love you. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you brought us through and thank you that we can be here today and praise is still on our lips. Yes, Lord, it has been hard. It has been a time of trial. But today, Lord, we stand here because of you and because of your goodness. So we continue to thank you. We continue to praise you. We continue to worship you. We continue to lift your name on high. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue to praise.
testament to the fact that he has been faithful to us. Amen. So please take a seat. Well, isn't it great to hear the Lord's people singing the Lord's song in the Lord's house uh, once again? Wonderful. It gives me a, an idea for a TV show, The Masked Singer. <laughs> Do you think it could work? Yeah. Yeah. Now I know what that line means, where it says, sing, sing like never before, with a mask on. Yeah. Well, if you put your TVs on today and over the coming weeks, uh, you can't avoid the Olympics and oh, yeah. later the Paralympics. Are you enjoying it, Anne? Yes, I'm enjoying it. Good, good, I'm, I'm, me too. But sadly, with no crowds uh, in those stadiums to cheer on those competitors. Well, setting to one side whether we think it's wise and right for those games to happen at all in these COVID times, I'm sure we will marvel at the skill and dedication of those athletes over the coming weeks in their quest for gold. And so I've taken an Olympic theme for our service today, but I left my tracksuit at home. <laughs> Apologies for that. And it won't surprise you to know that there are quite a number of Christian athletes taking part in the Games, uh, the Olympics and the Paralympic Games, those who have a strong faith in God that, while not necessarily giving them an extra edge against other competitors, they'll have that extra spiritual strength and knowledge that they're doing it for the Lord. And those athletes will follow in a long line of notable Christian Olympians. And I just want to mention a little bit about a few of their stories just now. Perhaps one of the most famous, Eric Liddell, a sprinter who competed in the Paris Olympics of 1924. And he said, I believe God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. And it mentions a Bible verse that was given to Eric on a folded piece of paper before his race. From 1 Samuel 2 verse 30, those who honour me, I will honour. And Eric, if you remember, he honoured God in those Olympics by refusing to run one of the heats on a Sunday, the holy day, the day of rest. And so he had to switch distances and he took on the 400 metres and he won a gold medal. A race held on a weekday. And he very much believed, and we believe, God, God honoured Eric's uh, faith and trust. And after those Olympics, he um, sacrificed fame and went on to become a missionary in China, just like his parents. And the film Chariots of Fire was based on his story. And I'm showing a picture of another Olympian, uh, Forrest Smithson, uh, took part in London 1908 Summer Games, and here we see a picture of him doing the hurdles. Oh, well, they look like wooden gates, don't they, but they're hurdles. And he's got his Bible in his hand. He ran the race with his Bible in his hand. Isn't that amazing? Why? Well, to witness as a Christian to his faith in God and God's word. A reminder to hold tightly onto the promises of God's word and run a race that counts for eternity. Jesus was their example and inspiration and will be for a number of those Christian Olympians competing in Tokyo. Jesus finished the race, and that's our last slide for the moment. 
based on Hebrews 12, 2, which says, we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. He endured the shame of the cross for the joy set before him and now has the place of honour by the throne of God. And as brothers and sisters in Christ, we follow where Jesus has led. Jesus is our pace setter, our example, the one we follow. And God gives us the stamina and the strength to keep going. And my goodness, we've needed that, haven't we, this last year? And with all the things that are happening in our lives, the great challenges that we have, Olympian challenges, uh, personal challenges, God gives us the strength to keep going. And I wanted to show you one final example of incredible stamina and strength that we're going to see in a short video now, which tells the true story of Olympian John Stephen Aquari. He was a marathon runner. He's still alive. He's 83 now. Um, and he's a marathon runner from Tanzania who took part in the Mexico Olympics in 1968. He finished not with a medal, but with something far greater than gold, as we're going to see and hear. 